we are praying dear lord in heaven we are grateful for this opportunity that you've given us to be in your presence thank you for your goodness your blessings and even the challenges that you have brought along our way it's our prayer that in all this we may see your goodness and be drawn closer and closer unto you a lot as we want to discuss on personal financial management we pray that your abiding presence may be with us open our minds that we may under stand and even implement these lessons in our lives is my prayer in jesus holy name thank you all uh riro you are welcome thank you very much Chadwick, and uh thank you everyone for joining us this evening and uh my name is jeremy riro as uh, Chadwick has already mentioned and I'll be the moderator for this session. Just to bring you to speed, uh, we're here to discuss um, matters to do with uh, our lives as youths in terms of uh, the other things that we go through or the other things that affect our lives apart from the normal things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. That is, uh, we take care of our spiritual lives uh, through Vespas, Sabbath worships, Bible studies, and other meetings that we have uh, as, uh, as Christians, as young Christians. Uh, and then the New Life Youth uh, Ministry leadership, so it fit that we should also try and um, grow in other areas of our lives, basically uh, the day-to-day -day things that we do out of church. And that is uh, our finances and uh, mental health, physical health, our social life, and those kind of other things. So I'd like to welcome you to this first uh, of many Sunday Sundowners, where we shall be discussing these kind of topics. And um, today, specifically, our topic is uh, focused or is centered around personal financial management with a very key and intentional uh, uh, focus on uh, this current situation that we are having of COVID and uh, trying to ask ourselves as youths, how can we manage our finances better so that we stay afloat longer? And uh, as youths, uh, how can we even increase our financial positions, or rather increase our wealth, if we have any, uh, during this season. And uh, to take us through this uh, discussion today, uh, I have two of my panelists who are experts in this, and uh, they are going to take us through this, uh, and then we'll have a very open uh, question and answer session. And I would like to urge everyone to actively participate. Uh, this real talk, honest talk, uh, it's nothing so serious like a Bible study where you have to raise your hand before you speak and you speak with a lot of caution. Here you are free. Uh, open up. Uh, let's, let us know the challenges you're facing. Uh, let us know how you are overcoming some of those challenges so that we kind of uh, learn from one another. Without much ado, I'm going to introduce our panelists today and then uh, I'll let them take over. Uh, and then after that, we, uh, I'll, I'll come back with the, for the question and answer session. Uh, with all of us. So our first uh, panelist uh, is, uh, both panelists are my good friends and I've interacted with them in different fora, but today they are my co-workers in this ministry. And so I'm going to start with the uh, ladies first. So I'm going to start with Juliet Othiambo. Juliet Othiambo joins us um, to talk about the, uh, the more about the personal financial management from the point of uh, budgeting and uh, how to plan your money and how to spend your money uh, so that you your money can take you longer. She has expertise in that. So Juliet uh, is a former banker. Uh, she is also a financial literacy trainer. She runs a company called uh, Pesa Savvy, which uh, focuses purely on training people on financial uh, personal finance, on budgeting and uh, savings and uh, you know. Uh, trying to plan your financial life and i think she'll uh, tell us more about herself when she starts to to speak i met uh, juliet uh through the mandela washington fellowship and uh, she was my schoolmate at kellogg school of management in chicago so i can vouch for her competence and she has a background in finance in addition to that uh, she has done her masters at uh, usiu on the panel also we have uh Brittner, Yantika. 
and this is a gentleman that uh, uh, sometimes I call him Tumishi. He's a friend of ours from uh, Lavington Church, and uh, his background, of course, is in finance uh, from Strathmore uh, School of Business. And uh, he's also a charter, chartered financial investment analyst. If I'm not wrong, you are going to correct me on that. And um, currently, uh, he's a, he works at CMA, the Capital Markets Authority. And so when you hear of CMA, it's all about investments. And today we're also going to look at uh, investments in terms of uh, how do you, where should you place your small money? As young people, you don't have a lot of uh, money, uh, or so I assume. Uh, but even with that little amount of money that you have, uh, we should be able to uh, invest it wisely and, uh, and then uh, come out, uh, you know, uh, financially free. Having said that, our topics today are going to range from investments into savings to budgeting to uh, insurance. Uh, we want to talk about risk preparedness. Uh, we want to look at uh, borrowing. Uh, we want to look at uh, uh, things to do with betting. Is it a good thing to do right now? You know, I mean, you can just put in a hundred bob and you come out with 10,000 and it pays your rent. Should we go that route or not? And all those topics are going to be covered by the experts that you have today. So in no particular order, I would like to allow my panelists to say hi. Juliet, say hi. 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 That's Juliet. <laughs> yes. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Brettner, say hi to us. Hi. Good evening, guys. Uh, it is my distinct honor to be uh, here. Yeah, and thanks for also having me. Okay, thank you very much. And now, without wasting a lot of time, because this is a day for, for my panelists and you as uh, the participants, I would like to hand it over to, to Juliet first. I think that's where we are going to start, so that before we go to investing, let's first get to hear about uh, our financial planning at a personal level. Uh, what should we be doing and how should we do it? And as they speak, Please note your questions on the chat. I'll be taking them up and then uh, we'll address them at the end of this. So, Juliet, uh, over to you. Please do a proper introduction of yourself. <laughs> I might have missed and then uh, you take it over. Over to you. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I always tell people that I love uh, money, but what I actually mean is that I love talking about money. <laughs> So any any discussion around how to spend it, how to use it, how to grow it, um, I love being in such uh, conversations. Um, like Jeremy said, as I'm talking, I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen so that I can give you my presentation. Uh, so as Jeremy said, uh, we I am I have a background in finance and banking and um, I run the financial education program. I love talking to younger audiences because um, I think when you are thinking about money and how you handle it and the disciplines around it, it's they're better learned at a young age. As in at that point, you're actually able to change people's thinking around money, how they handle it, how they deal with it. But for most of us, because we didn't get that kind of education when we were younger, by the time we actually have the money, we are so messed up. <laughs> Even like trying to fix things is a bit of a challenge. So I always say it's better to get them while they're still young. Uh, but other than that, I still do any, any opportunities I get to talk about it, I do that. So I'm just going to allow you to see sorry what i have so i'm going to just start by talking about um yes uh what being thrifty and what it means to to spend less or what it looks like to spend less or what it looks like to to manage our finances with when we really have very little to ha to handle in the first place especially with the people that i i often discuss with there are people who either have no money or have very little money and so even when you're talking about how to invest how to save and whatnot they're like um let's just start by how to earn it first right <laughs> but um 
based on where we are right now, we're just going to be talking about how to use what we have for the better and to for the longer, for the long run. Especially seeing the season that we find ourselves in. Right now, you want to have what you have. You want to see what you have going the long mile, right? Uh, t stretching you until the situations change. So this is actually, a, I want to call it a skill. Being thrifty is a skill. Because if it's not something you've disciplined yourself in, then it's something that you need to learn to do. So just based on the definitions, I hope you can see the screen now, but they are just started going on. Please yes, let me know. Okay, great. So to thrift or not to thrift? Um, well, I think we kind of know the answer already, but I want to, to, to start from there in terms of even um, talking about what exactly it is to be thrifty. Um, trying not to spend so much, put it simply. This is uh, Oxford's dictionary saying, um, being careful about how you spend and not being wasteful and things like that. And it's, a, it's something, if you're not, uh, if you look back over your childhood, you'll realize it's either something that you saw happening in your house or you didn't see. Because when we, when we see how our parents handle their finances, you are, it forms your thinking about money. And this is one of the biggest areas where actually we are influenced a lot by where the environment where we grow up in. And so we, we either have background where it was, there was a lot of thrifting or we have a background where there was a lot of spending. And most of us actually have parents who f fell on either side. So either you saw both of it happening and a lot of, um, what do you call it? A lot of disagreements around financial management in your house or they were both very thrifty or and you saw how to do that and you carry that along in your life none of them is specifically i don't think any of them is like being a spendthrift or being uh being thrifty either extreme is not necessarily a good thing i think so i think what you need to do is to find a balance and also looking at the season where you find yourself in and the situation you find yourself in and to strike a balance between how you're spending your money so um one of the things that i like to do even going forward i'll talk about it some more is um the idea of calling your budget a spending plan because there's a way the budget has become, it's like a taboo word because people don't, um, it, you find the word budgeting to be very constricting. It's like the word is telling you, this is your money, yes, but I'm going to tell you how you're going to use it. So it's like you've moved yourself out of what, you're, what to do with your money. So I like to call them spending plan because that kind of eases the pressure out of out of creating budgets. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to plan how you're going to spend your money, not to constrict yourself. So I like to call them, whenever I train people, like I, I call budget spending plans because it's like a mental shift. It's, it, it changes the view of budgeting. And because one of the reasons people really run away from the discipline of budgeting is that it's, it, that kind of mental uh, restriction that you've placed in your head because of the idea of budgeting or what budgeting has been made to mean in your life and what you have done or not done in the past because um, you know you ought to budget but you don't but think about it as an opportunity to spend you decide where the money is going and where the money will not go and at what time it will go there and at what time it will not go there so you're actually in control of it you are you're the one making the decisions about it. So Dave Ramsey says spending plan is telling your money where to go. Otherwise, the money will, you'll be wondering where the money went. So you'd rather be the one controlling the direction in which your money is going so that you are able to make the choices that you want so that you can actually create the kind of life that you want to be living. So when you're thinking about your budget, one of the, one of the things you need to pay attention to is the different types of costs that you have in your budget. Because there are many things that you can put into, into your budget, um, but the way, the, the trends that they have are based on three different kind of costs, three different types of costs. 
which are the constant expenses, the fluctuating expenses, and the cash expenses. So the constant ones are those things that are, they never change. Like from beginning to end, you know, like for the entire 2020, these costs are going to remain the same. One of the costs that remain, uh, that falls in this category is uh, something like rent. So unless your landlord uh, changes, increases, or reduces, if you have a nice landlord within this season, I hear some, some of the, those landlords have been reducing the rent, then rent is normally a constant expense. It does not change, it doesn't fluctuate at any point. Then the fluctuating expenses are those ones that are dependent on how much you use it. Things like water or electricity can either be very, can either be very high or very low. So this is something, it's kind of not very consistent though you can average how much you're actually spending. Then the cash expenses are the things like, um, what, going to the salon or your entertainment or your transport. These are very, you're always, um, they are fluctuating depend on, on the decisions that you actually make at any given time. So when you're trying to figure out um, your budget at a season like where we are now in COVID and this pandemic, you want to be, the things that you are able to control the most are the cash expenses. So when you're trying to reduce how much you want to, to be spending at any given time, you, you'll start at the cash expenses because those are the ones that you are most likely to be in control of. For example, if you spend 2,000 shillings every month to go to the salon for uh, talking to the ladies, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Um, I don't know, where'd you guys go? I don't know. So if you, if you spend 2K every month going to the salon, then this is a cost that you can cut off or reduce to a great extent because it's something that is very much within your control. Comparing that to the cost of, of rent, then mm -hmm. the cash expenses are actually more in your control. So when you're trying to reduce your, expense, your, your expenditure, that's where you start. So you start from the cash expenses going upward. And then if, if you're still in a position of deficit, then now you want to look at your entire budget and reduce something small, reduce a certain amount on everything on your budget. These are very difficult decisions to make if you actually don't even have a budget in the first place and you're not able to, um, you don't have a visual of what your financial expenditure looks like. So yes, one of the biggest problems about how to, about keeping a budget is maintaining it because of um, either our indisciplined nature, our lack of diligence, many people, a lot of us struggle with sticking with a plan, with a budget or like we said, a spending plan. The, the reason is that we go with it, with that mind shift that I was talking about, where you are very constricted, like you're tied to the decision that you make, you made at the beginning of the, of the year or month, and you say, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of the year, and it's never, ever, ever going to, cha to change. Uh, that's a problem because I think the very nature of budget is that they are very flexible and should be able to re to readjust, to be adjusted depending on your circumstances. So when circumstances change, you should be able to look at your expenditure and actually uh, move it around as you see fit. So like the first thing we say is that um, you need to change your mind, you meant have a mental shift stop looking at it as a constricting thing but as a freeing thing a budget should free you to spend however way you want it then allow the budget to be flexible and this happens when you review it regularly it doesn't matter how regularly but you should do it every month every other week uh, frequently so that you can see actually what the status of your finances are then it should be also realistic we can be very ambitious about the things that we want to do but we are not really having a realistic view of it. So when you're more realistic about your budget, uh, when you say you can't, you will not be eating out this month ever, 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 and you know there's a certain place that you're always passing that you have to stop in and get yourself something, then you're not, really, you're not being realistic about your budget. Uh, and finally, you want to have a financial goal. I think it's easier to stick with a spending plan when you actually know what it is that you're working towards if you have like i'm trying to reduce my loan debt to a certain amount so you are more motivated to work towards that rather than 
if you are if you know you should keep a budget but you have no idea why or you know you should be saving but you don't know why you're saving what are you saving for what are you, what what's in your mind what's your vision for your money so that you actually have the um uh, gumption to actually stick through it so these are the four things that can help you um can help you to be more uh more disciplined or more diligent with your with your budget now some things um some ideas on how to be thrifty the thing about personal finance is that it's personal like it's 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 as different as each and every one of us is is different in this call like we all have different priorities we all have different ambitions we have different salaries we have different sources of income and so each of our personal financial management will look different it will look different from person a to person b so even your ideas of being thrifty will also be looking different um it's diff it's a bit of a it's difficult to place the same demands on this on on people on different people you can't place the same demands on different people so these are just uh, some ideas but you can add them based on how you are living your life already so you can look at your plan and see i think i can cut off i can i can reduce my expenditure here i can reduce it there but these are some of the things that can actually help you in that process so it's good for you to think long term when it comes to expenditure you know sometimes we spend like when you spend on a daily basis a certain amount um it looks very little but when you add that up to let's say a month or a year and you look at a, at what that amount is that should tell you how much you're actually spending on this thing and give you like the what do the economists call it uh, is it cost benefit like where would you how where would you put that money if you look at it in the long term for example you could say i spend i spend 100 bob on credit every single day now spending 100 shillings on credit every day might not look like much but when you now accumulate that to what that looks like in an annual on an annual basis and you look at what you can actually do with that money at the end of the year then it can motivate you to be more thrifty to reduce that spending uh, on a daily basis so cut it out to maybe half and say okay i'll be spending 50 and then the other 50 i will do this with it so when you have that kind of long-term uh, thinking towards your your spending it can help you to be more thrifty the other thing is to keep records i've said this before be anal about your spending habits like don't budget in your head make sure you actually have a visual of how your finances are moving um many of us budget in our head you know and you only budget the big expenditure so you say, okay, so I know I, I earn for 5,000 shillings, my rent is 20,000 shillings, I pay, um, I pay for internet uh, 5,000 shillings, I, you know your, your major expenses. And then, you know, it doesn't really matter, we'll just figure it out along the way. And actually we find out that the, that the devil is in the details. So when you're actually not able to have the mental image of each and every of your costs you will not be thrifty you will not even know where to cut off you won't know where to reduce your expenditure so keep records keep good records physical records and not mental records the other thing is to pay cash i know we are <laughs> we are a technological country and we are trying to move on with the technology but sometimes technology can make your mind think that you're actually not spending any money so as much as possible spend cash where you can so that you 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 kind of have you it's like you're tricking your mind and making it very aware that money is leaving you otherwise you spend and spend and you're not actually realizing that you're actually spending money and the last one is to shop with a list um, if you leave the house knowing that you're going to buy certain things from the supermarket go with a list because when we don't then you will be surprised how much you come back with that you actually did not need so make a list of what you need before you go out there so that you spend as little as possible like i said these are only the top four that i could think through but when you look at your life you can actually consider the things that you can do to help you even in your in reducing your expenditure now um studies have shown that uh, we young people are not quite thrifty i don't know if it's in the it's uh, because of the age that we are living in um or or 
I'm not sure. I feel like our parents were more thrifty than we are, the generation uh, before us. And so we're going to just look at the things that have caused us to be a bit um, unthrifty, should I say. Now, we have these two cultural norms. Uh, one is YOLO and the other is formal. Last, last year, we just, there was a lot of discussion around how um, friendships are causing young people to fall into debt and go into expenses that they did not want or wanted to, but just did not have capacity for. So the idea of um, not wanting to miss out on anything or the idea that, you know, we only, you only have one day to live. You don't know if you have tomorrow. You know, that kind of attitude can make you spend that, spend what you did not extend, expect to, to, to spend. Actually, if you, there's a lot of scholarly articles about how young people are spending money because of these two reasons. You don't want to be left out of things and you want to live your best life right now. Yeah? We'll talk a bit about that a bit um, more. So what do, what do people spend money on based on that idea? Where do we uh, tend to spend money on? Like where are we likely to overspend? Where are we likely to splurge our money? Where are we likely to not know that we are actually losing out on, on some of our finances. Now, the idea of housing is, is tricky because people have uh, their own ideas of where they should ought to live. And sometimes we live in areas that are beyond our means. Um, certain people, uh, I won't name names, but certain people um, have this ratio of how much you should actually be spending on your rent. But like I said, uh, personal finance is personal. So some people have preferences, but you just need to be looking at your budget at any given time and see how can I manage to live the kind of life I want, but still within my means. So when you look at something like housing, one of the ways you can possibly reduce your spending and still live the kind of life that you want is to consider living with someone so that at the same time you're reducing your cost, but still. Um, enjoying your life or having your preferences met so it's being cost effective but still kind of having what you what you want the other the other thing that people spend money on is the transport the cars the, the ubers the taxis it's a uh, like we've become allergic to public transportation if you look at if you are you know sometimes uber can trick you because it will tell you from from here to there it's just to 50 shillings imagine just to 50 shillings now if you keep spending to 50 shillings twice a week at the end of the month it amounts to something right uh, the other thing that people spend a lot of this is actual um uh, research that has been done on what what actually millennials spend money on the other thing is on eating out and finally on gadgets electrical gadgets we spent a lot of money on it i don't know where you fall along this along this it might actually not even be any of this but when you look at your expenses if you can actually look at where your money goes then you can tell where you're splurging on and where you can cut off now um when you talk about contentment it's very difficult to talk about contentment and not bring the spiritual angle into it because contentment is a very, very spiritual thing. So you can either be uh, Christian spiritual or New Age spiritual or Buddhist spiritual, like whatever it is uh, you're coming from, there's an angle you have around contentment. And as, as believers, um, even myself being a believer, the contentment that we can hope to have even in life has to be rooted on who God is and who we know him to be. Because when we try to live a certain kind of lives that we have created for ourselves, then we are trying to meet certain standards. We are trying to uh, catch up to standards that have been set by either the world or your family or whoever. But when you realize that there's a certain way that God has called you to live your life and he has promised to meet your needs at any given point, then the only reason that you would not be content is if you do not trust him. 
if you don't trust what he has to say about your your finances and about your life because even what we have been given as as salaries or whatever sort of income that we have is is something that has been entrusted to us to be good stewards with and if we trust god to be who he is then we are going to be faithful with what we have and we are going to be faithful in how we use what we have so that we don't live the we don't live a life that uh shames him for being our god and also we don't live a life that uh feels like we are being denied certain things um god has promised us the best at any given time and our ability to trust him is determines how much of that we are actually going to be living in so whether you save or spend or whether you enter java or not enter java whether you whether you invest or not the, the how you deal with that money is how you look at it as a as a as an opportunity to be a good steward with what god has given you so this is basically what i had prepared i know we are going to talk even more um when we start engaging but i hope that you can look at those things that we have talked about and consider where you land and even um ask more specific questions about your specific situation thank you riro thank you very much juliet for that good presentation and i hope everyone has uh, taken note of the questions that they are going to ask as we'll be opening it up for discussion uh by all of us in a, in a little while just to try and uh, talk on a few things that i've picked from juliet's uh, presentation uh, is that uh, we need to have a mentor shift in financial, personal financial planning and management. You need to have a mentor shift from the way you are doing it right now to what is better. You need to be flexible. You need to be very realistic in what you're doing, and uh, you should have goals so that you're not just uh, managing your finances for the sake of it. And I've fallen uh, victim of this. I just save a lot of money, and then all of a sudden, I have this urge to do something. I end up uh, burning all that cash. So have a financial goal that keeps you disciplined. And then uh, she talked about how to be thrifty. You have to think long term, uh, keep records so that uh, you actually know you are tracking how much you're spending and how your money is moving. And when you're going to shop, go with a list. Uh, uh, this, one, this, one, this one is tricky, but yes, you should carry a list. And then you should pay in cash. And someone was asking, uh, what about the directive that we should actually be using M-Pesa to make our payments? Uh, I think uh, M-Pesa is more or less equivalent to cash. You just need to have a list so that you don't overspend. And uh, the reasons why most of us as young people are not uh, very thrifty, uh, I, I like the way, Juliet, uh, you have summarized them, uh, that we have a uh, fear of missing out. And uh, there's also the you only live once, which is a, which is a phrase that uh, we, we love using. But I don't know about tomorrow, so I only live once and it's my life, so let me just spend. And again, the other one is comparing ourselves to our peers. So for those who have just joined us, that's what um, uh, Juliet has been talking about. And of course, uh, Juliet uh, mentioned uh, a few points on uh, where we spend our money, where housing is there, we have gadgets, we have uh, going out and, uh, and, and, and eating out, all those kind of things. And uh, we, should all, uh, we should always be very cautious on how we spend our money there. Key takeaway is uh, make sure you track your cash so that you don't end up uh, burning all that cash. Um, now I'm going to invite our second panelist to make a presentation. And then after that, you're going to open it up to question and answer. We are going to have a very candid conversation around money. And uh, so for now, I would like to welcome my brother, um, Breitner to talk to us about investments and savings and uh, and how should we as young people, what are the, those options that we have as young people to, to make money? I know we don't earn so much. Uh, these statistics that came out uh, but that about the two point, about 2.6 million people who are formerly employed in Kenya, that's the number actually. The rest, about 15 million, they're in the informal sector. So out of all those people who are about 2.5, uh, these are very interesting statistics that I would like you to, to take home. Of course, finance people without numbers, you don't feel good. So they say <clears throat> those people who earn uh, less than 10,000 uh, in regular income, they form 50% of that number. And those who earn between uh, 25 uh, to about, between 10 and 25 
25K, they're about 24% of that number. And then we have those who are between 40 and uh, 55K per month, they're about 3%. So the rest who are above 55K per month to about 75K, they are only 1% of that number. So you can imagine we have very few people with uh, disposable incomes. If, uh, if our expenses in Nairobi are anything to go by, most of us uh, don't have the money la that we'd want to have to, to spend. And so it is uh, quite really uh, a challenge to save and invest. And I'm speaking from personal experience. And so we'd love to hear with our little monies, uh, where, can we put, where can we put this money and how can we increase it? So Bretna, welcome and take us through that and uh, give us some of those secrets. Where should we put our money? Uh, good evening. Uh, hey, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, uh, Juliet, for that brilliant presentation. I have, um, I think I'm also reorienting, uh, uh, getting to know more or less about uh, spending plans and the uh, intentionality around uh, spending. Thanks for that. I want to think, uh, I, Ruro, if you would allow me to share my screen, because Yes, you can break up. Yes, I can. Um, we... I'm having difficulties. Let me try to see how I can. Um... No, uh, as let me just let me just. Uh... Uh, if you can assist me, Riru, just to share my screen because I'm. I need to, it says you must grant permission in order to share your screen. Um, Betty, could you help us? Or win the admins? Uh, Riro, from my side, it's not it's not showing that I need okay. to grant any permission as admin. Okay. So I think right now, have you, have you tried to click on present now? Uh, so let me, I'm trying to get this, uh, let me just, uh, it's giving me a funny message. Let me share this with you so that I, uh, or if you can allow me, I can proceed without, but I really wanted you guys to just see what, um, the presentation I have. Just, uh, can you just bear with me? As I set, as I set this, Britain. I think on the on the right hand corner down there, there is a section uh, that has something called uh, present now. If you could use that, I'm trying to because uh, so it's giving me a message that uh, you must grant permission. So just trying to see what what. Um, yeah, must be uh, my iOS issues. Yeah? Uh, let me just, can I share this with you on email? Yeah. And you. Yeah, I can shoot it up. Yeah, sure. That will work. And I just speak through, I just speak through um, your presentation. So as we get uh, set, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be putting your questions on the chat uh, uh, section and you are going to you are going to to address them yes we are having iOS issues uh, yeah someone noted that you you windows people you you keep struggling <laughs> uh, Ruro, if you can confirm if you've received my email uh, okay, you can proceed as I refresh my 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 my, my email. So just uh, just to say uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I want to just to thank uh, the leadership for this kind of conversations that we're having uh, right now. I'm just reflecting on the book uh, by Robert Cars uh, titled "Money Came by the House" the other day. And, and so the book more or less is trying to explain the principle of stewardship and how God uses money, finances to 
develop uh, character in ourselves. So, and, and, and focuses on particularly, you know, Christ using very many par parables uh, regarding financial stewardship uh, to teach us about the uh, importance of developing godly qualities such as perseverance, discipline, charity, compassion, sacrifice, and um, honesty. And uh, so the book presents this argument that uh, indeed money is an ideal training tool for heaven. And um, I think these are the kind of conversations that I think we should be having to, uh, we should have often to discuss. Uh, when, when I look through, um, reading through um, one of my, my favorite authors, um, uh, Ellen White, talking about uh, the program, uh, the Remnant Church in the end days, um, you see uh, most of us doing that this time, you know, if we will be alive, is we'll find ourselves in situations where we have to stand on our own self. We must, uh, as a remnant, be not dependent on um, institutions and governments, be more independent uh, to, you know, seek for ourselves uh, ways that we can be financially independent, um, not only to sustain ourselves, but even more presently uh, to enable the work, um, uh, the mission that has been uh, interesting to us to actually um, uh, prosper. So, uh, uh, the context is, uh, I think, uh, it was very, uh, it just gave us uh, the right kind of um, uh, context to just to look at. Um, I'm just looking at like what Rodrigo was sharing on the, the economic survey 2019, the census 2019. To add to those figures, you have uh, a third of Kenyan youth uh, who are eligible for employment who actually are uh, not employed. And uh, the rest, over two thirds, are employed in the in the more or less uh, informal sector. So this uh, this does not preclude, um, you know, does not shield already those. So we entered into this uh, COVID season with with um, uh, other other kind of uh, um, with other with many other problems, uh, and also the other thing about when you talk about personal finances in, in the Kenyan context, or uh, more, more or less in Africa, you you the things that you know uh, other countries are not there, but like uh, like because of our very serious our social setup where we have to support our family uh, we have to support the community um and even now for christians because now we must dedicate uh, a great amount of even our own personal resources uh, sacrifice our personal resources for the work so even that really changes how we approach uh, the topic uh, on, on financial management and personal finance money because it, it, it becomes uh, completely different. And I think if we had time, then uh, we can um, we can we can we can take it up. Now, uh, so I'll just take you through uh, uh, what what uh, I, I will stick with what uh, Juliet was sharing on on. Uh, so what I have as my uh, budget plan. So as I, I'm just going to discuss, my key objective is just to look through uh, this uh, important matter of uh, savings and um, uh, just explore explore through my presentation how, how we can cut our cost and increase our savings, how we can protect our savings and the safe investment options that are available to us and what measures should be uh, put in place to protect uh, savings and um, investments. I don't know if you, you have so far managed to get. It can be seen. I'm already sharing my screen and I have your presentation on. Can it be seen? Okay. I can't see it on my end. Okay, well, let me try again. Can you see it? Can see it. We can see it. Okay. Yeah. So try sharing it with Green if, if he can present as the writer continues. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, as I shared, yeah. Uh, so, so, so the first thing is, uh, is I mean, first, the first key is for us is to just to relook, um, you know, just relook at our, our spending plan uh, budget. Uh, uh, so, one of the key things that, I, that you will note is uh, so in the screen that uh, once it shared. You will not the actual prominence of um, now how should actually your you know more or less your spending plan and your budget look like, and um, now since the focus more or less is on investments and savings, you will not that uh, in your spending plan you know the the intentionality about um, you having uh, you having to really think. Uh, about how you are going to prioritize uh, your your savings. Now, the key thing I think sometimes we miss out, and I mean we, you know, it all happens to us. We are also on a financial literacy uh, journey. Around, uh, we have very uh, more or less a steep learning curve on this. Is uh, of us actually. So like I remember, you know, back in the day, you know, you you're given money and um, first, uh, you know, spend, you know, do everything, spend, and then whatever remains, uh, that's what now you actually could. Uh, then now that's what you can say that you want to uh, actually uh, save or invest. But now, if you for the goal of intentionality and um, and for you being conscious, you must actually prioritize every month uh, after paying your tithe, your offering. Uh, next, you should think about. So this is how I actually do it. Is so what goes into my savings? What uh, what do I invest? And um, then now I have uh, my ex my my expenses now. Um, now that will vary month to month, uh, depending on the on, on the situation uh, that 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 happens within that particular month. Uh, but but uh, if we go, uh, if 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 we if we go, if we go, uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing us trying to present to once I cast it so I can explain. Riro, we can see your screen. Riro, your screen is live. Riro, if you can, if you can just actually just yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Ah, uh, thanks, 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 Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, for, for this. Um. Uh, just uh, you can go to the next slide. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Right. So, if uh, I wish, so if you actually see what I have, what uh, the slide before, the slide before. Oh, this, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, we were talking about your budget. Now, if you look through uh, among the interest, so after you, you, you have uh, your income there, you know, you have, of course, in order of priority, you have your tithe, you have your offerings. Uh, immediately after that, you have uh, your savings. So I think the first thing is, is about how, about being intentional, being deliberate about uh, what amount of money you are cutting away uh, every month to uh, to save and invest, and then now you know, after after you what what you have uh, budgeted for you now you have your own fixed expenses and your other expenses. Uh, you, now now that so what 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 I've actually what you see there is that changes now in with COVID is. Now, if you're, if I'm taking, if, if I took up 50% pay cut because of COVID, I need to cut my expenditure 50%. Now, this time, just to, uh, 
keep your finances at least more or less healthy. You want to, because the goal now is to maintain the level of savings uh, that you had been doing before, or 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 and or uh, your investments, while trying to cut your expenses. So the next next slide, please. And uh, how do you how do you actually now? The question is now how do we grow our 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 savings so let's talk about two two broad uh broadly on a high level and and julie just did a wonderful uh job of this and on this and and and, and, and during this time you just want to focus really what what is fast uh split up and say your expenses look at what is really essential what's not essential during this time uh just go on survival mode you want to really focus on uh, spending your money on what's really important now and um, uh, rescheduling, you know, your other expenses to uh, the future. And then, then many other tips uh, which you can see on the screen, um, actually to, to do that. So I have a matrix there where I, I just uh, have what is, um, what is important and urgent. Uh, that, you know, like, you know what, rent money, your medical expenses and all that. Then if you have to do any other thing, you know, um, you have to do like capital expenditure, you want to, it's, it's probably not the right time to actually uh, get to buy a phone, for example. Uh, it's not the right time to, you know, do some, you know, do some huge capital expenditure during, during, uh, during this time. So, I mean, you must be very deliberate about how you actually rationalize your expenses. Um, actually free up more money to be, uh, to be saved. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. So we're just uh, finishing now. Now on that's that's on the expenditure side. Then now on the uh, uh, Jeremy, if you can go to the next slide. You want to also think about um, increasing your income now. Sometimes, okay, I, I, I mean, uh, many people will differ with me on this. Um, I mean, many people, uh, there's, uh, many people focus actually on, um, like, the whole question about, uh, of course, uh, how we manage our, money, our finances about expenditure. But I think also we must balance it all out. Um, rather than telling people to, you know, conservatively, you know, you have a piece of cake, uh, then uh, the use of that cake grows. So rather than tell people, look, like, uh, distribute that cake more, you know, try to slice it up uh, into many pieces. Uh, why not just grow with that cake or grow the cake or bake a bigger cake? So flip up the argument and talk about now how, uh, especially now in, no, and, and this is the real environment we're talking about in Kenya now, right now. Look, you have very high inflation rates at around 4%. You have uh, goods, uh, basic goods over the last five years, which have increased by 15%. Now, uh, we must now start talking about uh, not only how to reduce our expenses, but also how do we now grow our income. So uh, during this period, uh, you know, uh, one of the key ways is to also see ways you can actually uh, grow your grow your income. Uh, I'm seeing we're experiencing problems, but I think we, we can just proceed out, speak through it. Uh, we can also explain, explore ways to actually uh, in, uh, increase our income. Now, as we as we're at home, we can think about um, we need to learn a new skill. Um, I'll be talking later about now investing your savings uh, to give you extra income, right? You just have cash in the bank, cash laying in the bank, for example. Uh, do you have a particular skill set that you would digitize and probably, you know, give remote assistance from from um, from uh, from home? And, and and I'm sure you guys have been bombarded by these presentations of uh, working from home. I think it's just like you are just looking at your own skill set and uh, asking yourself, can I, same, same skill that I was uh, sharing when I was um, at work, can I also share it 
easily from the comfort of my room, for example, right? Uh, can I give consultancy, for example? So I think that that those are the discussions that we we can uh, we can can actually have. Now, I'm talking about savings, um, uh, savings versus uh, investments. There, there's a key distinction that we must give in regards to what we would consider savings versus investments. And um, and there's, there's, uh, the major distinction now comes in uh, the fact that, uh, well, of course, both, um, uh, both involve uh, you putting away uh, money, right? Money away. Uh, for for saving, for example, you're actually putting money away uh, mo mostly for uh, purchase something uh, or for an emergency, right? So, so you, when you save money, it typically means it is available when you actually need it, and it has a very low low risk of losing value. Um, it's different now. If we're talking about investing, the, the, the distinction is now for investing is is a risk that you're undertaking that in investment you have the risk of loss um, now, but if you're saving you you don't have the risk of loss of course now if less now let's say if you have a savings account in the, with a bank in the bank but for an investment for example if you invest in real estate you may put up a building for example uh, then there's then it will actually come and rent it out from you so that that key distinction uh, is is very important on because now it will guide how actually you actually plan uh, when you're doing your budget, uh, what goes into your savings, what you call savings, and what goes into your investments. Um, and 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 uh, if you get if you when once you get the slides, you 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 find a slide where I'm, I'm just uh, going to really look through this issue about uh, gambling, speculation, or investing. Now, uh, and, and at, at the top, I think, because I think it's not really a topic that I really wanted to actually uh, get, uh, get into uh, at this point. Just ask yourself. Now, as a Christian, you also more or less an ethical investor, right? Um, you cannot, um, thank, thanks, thanks, Duncan, for this. Thanks, Duncan, for that. Um, if you can go to the slide. And savings. Uh, thanks. The next one. Perfect. 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 Uh, thanks, Dick. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Uh, you have um, now, as a Christian, you have uh, an, an ethical. You have uh, an, an obligation to also act ethically. I wouldn't expect you, as a Christian, for example, to. Um, invest in a company which sells tobacco for example or which uh, markets marijuana for example right so in as much as uh, we have this vi uh, vast array of uh, investment options now you must ask yourself like to ask yourself those questions like uh, who are you you know what what are your investment values right so write out your investment values write out your investment differences right uh, i mean really um uh, owning a bar in a robin right now is one of the most profitable businesses, right? But then, is, is it is it is it aligned to your values? Is it aligned to your own personal preferences, right? Would you you know talk about uh, your investment in a bar or a liquor store, for example? So I think for for a Christian, it, it's even um, higher duty because right, you have all these kinds of investment options. But then, would you take this particular route? And now, and even more for 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 to consider is uh, the issue of um, gambling, which I, which I consider to be attacks on 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 people's ignorance. You you the, the you know the the hardest thing you know there's a study done on gambling and the effect on the brain, and most of these guys who are addicted to gambling, for example, you know the same effect the heroin will have on your brain is the same effect that, that gambling does um, uh, to your brain. Now, Ethically, you know, uh, you how the, the question about um, whether to invest uh, or to gamble your money, for example, right, is, is a question that we, you know, we have um, before us on on betting, right? 
uh, can you, you know, as a Christian, for example, make your money, right? Um, all over the world, I can just, if all secular governments have, you know, and these are secular nations where you have um, arguments and lobbyists who are against gambling, why? Because they say they rob the real economy of money which would have been used in more productive cases. There's a study done in Kenya, um, just by the World Bank, I think, and uh, I can retrieve it and share with you on, um, it's done in Kenya, and you'd find that most of the people who actually were gambling were actually even borrowing money to gamble, or borrowing whatever uh, money they had uh, in um, their mobile money accounts to actually gamble. Now, it's, it's the hardest thing is to actually risk um, money uh, that you don't that you don't have uh, for, and and so you 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 have borrowed, actually put it uh, pack your money in in what you call an investment, then you have a complete 100% um, uh, risk loss. Now, anything that you have 100% risk of loss, right? Where you have, uh, where you you know for sure that you have two options. Either you have extremely substantial uh, gain or an ex extremely substantial loss, right? Uh, then and, and 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 the emotional triggers to it, right? Uh, and and you're not acting on some rational basis, right? Now, for example, if I if I give you an example, how how am I sure about um, Arsenal uh, taking the Premier League, for example? You, you know, the the, the odds uh, are, are like a thousand to one, for example, right? But if I buy a share of Safaricom. Day um, after year, I can tell for sure that people will still communicate that that I can predict reliably that if I'm putting my money uh, buying a Safaricom share, for example, that I know reliably I have uh, and the risk of loss in my investment is not a hundred percent. So, so those are the things that, that 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 we can just actually look. But but the question that I think I would leave to our own judgment is: is, is it an ethical thing um, uh, for 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 Christian to gamble? And I think it's not really a question that uh, I can answer. That that really is, is is a question that we can take a discussion on on the theology behind it. And you can read uh, in your own time, Sister White's um, question on this. Uh, next next slide, Duncan. The goal is just to be as a Christian is to be an ethical investor. So how do how do you grow your, your savings? As as I said, you must prioritize your savings. So every month, and you give yourself a target and say, look, I must uh, save like at least a thousand shillings. Um, and now I'll, I'll the next slide. I'll talk about uh, the kinds of options that we have. A savings challenge. There are those. Uh, if you just go online and just say a savings challenge, there is you know there is you can you can be saving. Let's say. 100 book a week, for example, 200 book, 500 book, depending on your 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 on your income. You can get into a chama. Uh, I think as as uh, I think we we must um, uh, like use our our Christian circles not only to discuss um, um, you know it, it's you know those are very key things you know matters of uh, our spiritual nature, but also the same same circles. A very useful good circles where you can actually live rich, actually come together and have a more or less merry go round. So you have a system where you each of you saves uh, a certain amount of money a week, and then you share. Now you have a timetable on how actually you will distribute that money to members in that um, in that group. Uh, one of the things you it uh, one of the things that you note. Is, um, is uh, most 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 of the people who have succeeded in life have have had um, you know are in some merry go round uh, or or also now I think most of us uh, actually don't play this but if you ask I'm sure even the ladies uh, here they in a couple of them and they can tell you how actually it sorts them out uh, to. Um, to get an income, and then now you attach now within the chama 
the most dangerous thing people do within the chambers is that you just loan money without an interest. I think it is good to encourage a savings culture and a return culture, to encourage people to, to have very good money, money, you know, what I call uh, money skills. It's to always see money having a price. Now, you, it's good. So in your chama, you know, say, if I'm going to borrow 2,000 shillings, I will return it with interest, right? Just, just develop that, that, that enthusiasm within the group to actually save. Now, it's so good for you to also have, like, track uh, your, your, your savings. Like, say, now, what did you save last year? What are your saving goals? So at the beginning of the year, you say, now, I, I plan to save, like, 100,000 shillings. So then you ask yourself, like, have I been meeting my goal? Uh, month for month, can you reflect on that? I think a very key thing, um, Peter Savings Accountability Partner, I, 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 my sister, for example, I'm very close to my sister, and we, we do these things, we're actually in the same, we have uh, in the same circle, more or less. Um, so, so I think these are things we can reflect on. Like, is there someone you can trust who you can do, like the savings challenge with? Uh, is there someone that you trust that you can share? You can be a accountability partner who can hold your account to what you do. In terms of uh, options, next slide, Duncan. You can uh, get uh, many savings account uh, by our banks. Uh, most I think the return is around four um, uh, percent. You you can save through your circle. You can get into a circle. Even the Adventist Church has a circle uh, for those of us who do not. Uh, no, and uh, you can save through a money market account. Now, this is more or less this is operated by you find most fund managers having a money market account. So where they invest in uh, mostly the types of uh, your site on CFC. So if, when you talk, if you talk to your bank or you go to a broker and so I want to how to open a money market account, they can open for you. It's a good savings plan where you have. Uh, uh, the interest rate, uh, you know, the, the return profile on, on the assets that at around 11 to 11 to 12 percent average. Then also insurance uh, savings plans, you know. So they're very so. The, the key thing to note to ask yourself: What is the return that you're getting on your saving? Right? Because you're putting away money either to purchase something or for future emergencies. Right? Uh, so. Typical savings account around four percent. Circles uh, around ten to eleven percent. Money market account around eleven percent. Try savings plans. May may may, may uh, they have different return types uh, depending on how how long a particular plan is. But you must ask yourself now. I want to pose a question to you. If the inflation rate for uh, that we had last month is around four nine percent. Then I give you a return of three percent. But I, what that does is that you may you may save your money there, right? Then the purchasing power of that money is uh, is, is 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 lower now because now the, the the value the value of the thousand shillings, like if you remember, uh, twenty years I don't know if my, if I have my age here, we used to buy bread at uh, at around a uh, quarter of a bread was around three shillings. Now if I uh, want was to buy the same same right now it would be around 23 shillings now what what has happened over over that time uh inflation inflation has increased and it has eaten into the value of the money so a thousand shillings um five years ago whatever it would buy in a supermarket it can't buy that today that is the key distinction so as you save ask yourself what is the return you're actually getting ask your bank what is the return on this savings account, right? So then you, you prioritize and say, no, look, I won't put my money in a savings account, I'll put it in a circle or a money market account. So if, if you're taking a, a, an insurance savings plan, ask yourself, what is the return on this particular insurance savings plan, right? On, on, on this term uh, insurance plans. So the key thing about your saving is to focus on the return. Uh, I think another day we can, we can go through and uh, discuss uh, the, the other issues around that. Uh, next slide. Thanks. Uh, so so uh, then I go straight to investments. And um, and I, I think, uh, the, so I have a quote there by, if you, this, this book I really love, um, 
by Benjamin Graham, uh, the father of uh, value investing. He has, and he says a very key thing, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and uh, greedy when others are fearful. Of course, these are not um, very good words to use to seize on the Christians. Uh, I think that whatever is being communicated in that um, that quote is um, when, when, when others are pessimistic about the future, it's a good time as an investor to take a contrarian approach to be optimistic. And then, at times, uh, when people are overly optimistic, right, um, be very pessimistic about uh, uh, a specific investment. Now, I'll give case in point is the real estate market in Kenya. Five years ago, uh, five years ago, before, before more or less the, the bubble that happened, uh, more or less and the market correction that happened last year, five years ago, people were overly optimistic on 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 property. So people invested a lot of money um, into property. But then one of the key things that, you know, one of the key problems that happened is that most of these people do not actually take time to survey the demand, the actual demand for property. Uh, you know, the uh, funniest thing is, you know, I sat in some meetings where you, so you ask someone, so you are, you're building this mall, so how did you assess the demand? And the guy says, no, I just took a helicopter and flew over and I saw the many people. But, I mean, really, I mean, yourself and myself would, would attest there are malls in Kenya which actually are typically more or less empty. Now, what happened? It's 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 the lack of uh, precious investment uh, understanding, and, and 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 this is about this is more or less about not even about your IQ, not about in your investment, you know, IQ, but it's also about your investment eq right what's your emotional um standing especially in crisis time uh crisis time most people will shy away from uh, from 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 the stock market for example right um and, and when people shy away what what happens is now stock prices fall because now people sell off their stocks now for an optimistic investor because you know that for sure, we shall pass through COVID and we shall recover from COVID. You know that this uh, end of entities are very strong and they will return back to their normal uh, uh, profitability in probably two years. You know that now if I buy a Safaricom share at, 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 at 20 shillings right now, I know that the, the highest price that Safaricom share has hit is 35 shillings. I know that I can recover that price in the next one or two years. So, and that's the thing. So, in, in, in difficult times, in crisis periods, now, we will meet any crisis periods, especially in our lifetime. Now, I'm, I'm guessing most of us, I'm just looking through a profile and I'm looking at the participants and most of us are youthful. We will meet more crisis periods in our lifetime. And the key thing is to have a contrarian emotional approach. Now, we must also manage our emotions around investing. So sometimes you, and, and I meet many people who find this particular thing. So they, oh, the stock market has lost uh, 260 billion today. Um, the price I bought the Safaricom share at 15 shillings, now it's six bob, I want to sell. You know, that's panic selling. During crisis period, you must gather emotional strength and have very strict financial discipline to weather the storm. So even during this time, very attractive opportunities that you can invest your money in. Right now, if I, for example, I uh, probably I can share. Uh, if, uh, I, I can get uh, probably I'll get uh, uh, when I get. Uh, I, can, I can share something with you. I had some 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 market analysis are done, which I want to share with you. We can I can get I can see I can share that with you now. During this time, if you look at the business daily, for example, if you go to the business daily or the NSC website today, you will see uh, uh, that you have um, prices of uh, of shares. So I will, I will just read out for you, for example, uh, 
um, uh, for for a company like uh, Kakuzi, uh, sometimes trades at 290 shillings, but the highest is at 460. Um, just trading uh, on Friday at 320 shillings. So I can mention very many, many shares that you have uh, the current price and the highest price is differed. Why? Because of the negative sentiments in the market. This company still remain very strong, very strong companies, which you can actually take up the opportunity to invest in. Now, two rates, you know, treasury bills and treasury bonds, for example, at this time. Now, government, uh, if you've read in the papers, we government is actively looking for money. Now, government cannot issue another euro bond, uh, as you know, because uh, once Moody's downgraded us, it made euro bond yields more expensive. So for the country again to go to the euro bond market, it becomes more expensive for the government. So the government is looking for money locally. And for it to look uh, for money locally, it uses the central bank, which issues weekly uh, T bills and treasury bonds. Now, treasury bill and bond rate uh, are now uh, between the rate of seven to eight percent. These are highly attractive rates, and then of course in the mid uh, and they will continue increasing uh, in the in the foreseeable future. So these are very attractive investments, which you can actually take up on. Uh, and I will explain later the the, the actual. Uh, minimums that you actually need. Next slide. Uh, Duncan, next slide. Thanks, thanks. Ah, uh, so so what are your what are your kind of investment options? So um, I've talked about treasury bills. So treasury bills. So you can get this. Uh, so you go to your your own bank um, and you can invest in multiples of fifty thousand. Uh, treasury bonds, uh, same same way. Uh, the minimum amount is fifty thousand. If you have around hundred thousand uh, for some for some of these bonds, uh, you can invest in a collective investment scheme. For example, they, they, this we call unit trusts, um, run by very. We have very you know there's old mutual for example, is number capital. Uh, so if you go to the Capital Markets Authority website, you can actually, uh, so I, I'll, I'll actually share that in the chat box after, after I'm done with the presentation and, and see what kind of companies where you can actually get this. And also government is also keen on rolling out the Emma Keeper program, which is a, a retail mobile money based bond for, for, for the Kenyan public. Now in regards to protecting your, uh, you can check out so you know, it's um, choice is, is very important. Um, having an insurance cover is a very good way of actually protecting yourself. So I mean, the question has been posed. I think uh, to, was posed to me earlier by Jeremy, and and these are the key things. So taking uh, cutting your money away in insurance, taking uh, life insurance, for example, is a very good way, especially for guys who are in the gig and hustle economy. It's a very good way of actually uh, safeguarding your future because now you don't know when you're getting cash flows in the future, for example. And if you are sure that you can invest a certain amount of money every month to a life, a term or an investment plan, uh, that would really uh, help you out. Uh, if you can go to the next, next. So I've just looked through all kinds of sectors. And so that was just looking what all kinds of sectors that we have and investment options. So I had, um, so, uh, if we uh, uh, next next slide, so I, I think I just talked about this. Is um, you have to compare whatever on, on on just a simple basis, compare the risk, the return that is promised versus the risk that that you're going to actually take. Now, and that and that will affect actually now this particular. So so I'm just looking at the kinds of investment types now. Uh, Ash uh, has Lowest risk, lowest return, right? So as I go across, as I go to my right, if I, if, as I move from cash, to unit trust to bonds, stock, and others, uh, the risk, as the risk increases, the return on those specific investments will increase. So you ask yourself a question. Now, we ask yourself, so what are your investment values? Write down your investment values, your differences, what are your objectives, what are your desires, what are your plans? So are you saving for retirement, for example? 
are you saving to start school next year, for example, right? Uh, what what are the kind of uh, entities you want to uh, you're an ethical investor? So are there entities you don't want to touch, for example, on that basis? So very key thing is also to ask yourself just to uh, look through um, what uh, what is my investment horizon? Uh, what is the timeline through which I want to invest? Uh, so do I want to invest for one year? Do I want an investment for three months, for example? Right, so that that actually changes it. What type of return do I want? To, do I want to expose myself to very high risk with the potential of a greater return, or very low risk with um, potential of low low return? So in fact, so I can, if if I invest in a saving account, as I said, for example, mostly at a, the return is around four percent, right? For unit trusts, return is around nine to ten percent. Bonds, uh, government bonds uh, that are being issued, for example, my keeper bond was 10%. Uh, stocks, um, the NSC returned around 18.5% last year, for example. So, and, and now we go to other, these others, I don't want to actually touch on them today. But, uh, if you have an interest in them, we can have, actually discuss. On, we can take that as another day topic where we demystify what are derivatives, exchange traded funds. Uh, global depository receipts and all that, so we can we can talk about another day. The key focus, uh, what we're trying to say is, is, we have all these kinds of investment options, right? Then you're asking yourself, uh, what kind of exposure of risk do I want? What is my what are my investment values? Um, what is my need of cash? Do I need cash after three months? So if I need cash in three months, I'll only put my money in uh, an investment through which I can liquidate easily my money uh, in three months. So I can put my money in a, a three-month treasury bill. I could put my money in a fixed deposit account. I could put my money in a savings account. I can put my money in a unit trust where I buy in and easily buy out of, out of unit trust. If I want to save for retirement, for example, uh, I put my money in, in a bond. Right, a long-term five-year bond, right, and and and, and this actually now even um, uh, even now even even changes. So so if uh, I'm looking at investments of one year or less, where the goal is just uh, accessibility of money, and uh, the need of you to pres preserve the value of your funds and get a moderate interest, I put my money mostly in a savings account, put your money in a circle, treasury bill. In a fixed deposit of one month to one year, where you, the rate of return is around eight to ten percent, and a money market fund where the rate of return is between seven to nine percent. If I need an investment between one to three years, I put my money probably in a one year treasury bill, right? Um, the returns are around, as I said, eight percent. I put also my money probably in a five year treasury bond. I buy shares. If I need to, and and, and that's and, and and that's one of the key things that most of the people who have made money out of um, who have made the greatest money, the greatest um, uh, uh, wealth, uh, the likes of Warren Buffett, for example, the guys we we also look uh, seek to also uh, learn from the investment uh, patterns is they have long-term investors. They're not uh, short-term investors. Now, long-term investors, you know, it's uh, it, it it affects even how you see wild swings in the market. So you cannot panic sell. So if you have a long-term view on, on Safaricom, because you know that Safaricom will be here for years to come, you, you can just buy, uh, keep on your shares, they will keep increasing in value, and also you'll be getting your dividends. Now, if you need to get into investments of between three to five years, you have long-term treasury bonds, you can buy land, you can buy property, for example. Uh, you can buy, even now, uh, get into, there are many of us, even in our own forum here, running small businesses you can you can reach out to them and say hey i know jamie you're running a very serious consultancy firm i want i have five hundred thousand, and i think you need to expand your business to get more returns so i will buy 10 percent of your business at this particular price and then we have a profit sharing arrangement so i think also for us to diversify uh, our investments uh support each other each other's businesses um uh, by by coming together and leveraging on our networks to grow our businesses. Uh, next slide, Duncan. Yeah, so, so this, I'm just, uh, so this, uh, 
it's a simple calculation. Now think about today. If you if you, if you invest a monthly investment of 150 um, shillings, now uh, and you invest for 40 years, and I give uh, I'm just, I've put that uh, I've compounded uh, rate of nine percent, right? And, um, and over four, imagine so over 40 years, for example. So at the end of this 40 years, so when you're 60, you'll have 600,000. Now, Mr. B, who's 40 years old, if he starts at 40 for the next 20 years, what will he earn? He will earn 200,000. So what I'm just trying to say is this, that time is in your favor. The more youthful you are, time is in your favor. And the best time to actually start um, saving is today. It's, it's 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 not so don't it's people procrastinate saying no look I'll wait till you get more money what if that day really comes so it's it's a small small um, so I just showed you if you're investing 150 shillings right let's see how whatever small amount be dedicated being intentional about that saving you will actually see it multiply years to come. Uh, and you can actually, so if you see even the online one year savings plan, if you're committed to it, you can actually see what you can actually get at the end of the year. Now, repeat again, think, and that's one key thing that time is always in our favor. Uh, when you're young, you have also the strength, you have also the mental, you the, the emotional discipline, you weather many storms in life. So the earlier you start, uh, the better for your tomorrow. Uh, next slide, Duncan. Is. Yeah. So, so I, I think I just have this case. So, so I assume that the average cost of a mobile phone is by the, um, is, is around ten thousand shillings. So, if you opted for a cheaper kabambe, five thousand shillings, and you invest next to five shillings, five thousand shillings in Southcom shares, twenty twelve, which were trading at four shillings. And uh, so I gave the price. Uh, I just took. Uh, I just took a two-year profile. Now, if I had taken, uh, including this year, uh, where uh, the price is around six shillings, it would, it would have been great. So you have a four hundred percent return, meaning that five five thousand shillings would have been worth twenty thousand shillings. Just think about it. Like, there's something that you can do in a very simple way, right? Actually, grow yourself. Now, stock market. I want to also just. Because I work for the Capital Markets Authority, um, it's, it's it's one of the things that I see. You know, you 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 know, uh, I see very few youth actually taking up opportunities that are there in the capital markets, like investing in shares. Think that oh no, these things are for old people. No 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 no. Think about, uh, for example, if you want to buy shares today, the minimum amount you can buy shares is uh, is uh, you can buy a hundred shares. Now, if, for example, a, a share for let so let me just look through my my data feed, and Gigard um, is trading at eight shillings. So if uh, so, eight times hundred is eight hundred. So with eight hundred shillings, I can actually invest in the stock market. Sini is trading at sixteen shillings. What on Friday that is, and so sixteen times a hundred, one thousand six hundred shillings. Absa Bank was trading at ten shillings times a hundred. That's a thousand. So Right now, with a thousand shillings, you can actually start today to actually invest. Uh, today, I want to apologize for the hiccups that uh, were there during the start of our presentation, and then I'll actually uh, hand over the virtual mic to to Jeremy. And thank you for your kind uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Britna, for that uh, very insightful presentation. And uh, I will apologize again for the for the technical hiccup. Uh, things happen, but you're back and you're going to conclude well and strong. So we have heard from our panelists. And uh, just to summarize, I was off and on during Britna's presentation. But basically, what I've gathered from the presentation is all about, uh, first of all, you need to you need to have a budget and save. After you have saved, then you need to start thinking about uh, investing. And when you think about investing, it's all about uh, your investment horizon. Do you want the money sooner or do you want it uh, after a long time? And the other thing that you have to factor in is also the, uh, 
um, the risk that is involved in whatever investment that they want to pursue. So those were very insightful um, uh, insights that uh, we've gotten there. And I would like us to jump into question and answer. And our questions are going to cover everything that we, we have covered today from what uh, uh, Juliet shared uh, on, uh, on personal finance. Sorry, on personal finance to what uh, Brittany has shared on uh, uh, on investments, and just maybe to open up the question and answer uh, session uh, where we are going to interact and talk freely is uh, I'll ask a few questions to both of you, Brittany and uh, Elliot, and as you respond to them, we'll be collecting questions from uh, the participants. Uh, my first question comes to you, Brittany, and then I'll go back to Juliet because we just finished right now. Told us that we should buy shares. As a stock market, and this is an alien thing. Even for some of us who are in finance, we, we really are not so funny. Far, far, we are not a fan of uh, investing in the markets, and we tend to believe that this is a place that uh, only those who are experienced uh, should uh, should go there. I'll give an example. Personally, I went to the stock market. I was in high uh, campus, and I was excited about the market, so I bought uh, Home Africa shares when it was being listed. So uh, I bought it at uh, around, I think it was uh, 12 shillings back then. I remember when it was listed, it was 12, it jumped to 24, and then it came back to 12. So I put in my money there. Of course, uh, it was my savings uh, from help. And then uh, the share today, I bought at 12 shillings. Today, the share is at uh, 44 cents. So basically, I lost everything. I cannot even go back there to try and claim the money. So how do you balance between the risk that is there that your money can actually go down and um, the upside. And you are not a regular trader. You don't have the expertise of choosing the right stock. So how do you, or the right share to buy? How do you go about that? Because literally from 12 shillings to 44 cents, man, uh, that, that's painful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, thanks, thanks for that question. And um, it's, it's, it's a question that uh, we face, uh, I mean, really, um, as, as an authority uh, in regards to some of uh, these entities. Now, as first is uh, uh, one of the key things that, that you will say, investment has the risk of loss, right? Okay. So uh, as you, as so if I'm getting to buy a share, for example, if I'm getting to the equity market, the risk of return is completely high. Now, if you if you had bought the Safcom share, which Home Africa was in which year? That was in 2000, um, maybe 20, around 2013, there about. Yes, 2013. The Safcom share price, I think, in 2013, around June, was, uh, was around 11 shillings. Now, 11 now, you have bought, if you have bought 11, for example, now Safcom share price is around 26. Now, that's double, right? Now, yeah. so what do we actually? What are we actually learning? Is you need to diversify investments. So, if for example you're investing in the in the in, in in the stock market, diversify. So, for example, Home Africa is in the investment segment, right? Yeah. So, uh, if, if you had if you had for example twenty thousand shillings, you if you put your entire portfolio in just one particular share your risk of loss is magnified because now if that entity, if there's an issue, if the, if the entity itself doesn't turn into profitability, it will be wiped out. So imagine now if you took um, 20,000 and split it up uh, among three entities. So probably you bought Safaricom, for example, and then you bought Centum, and then you, you know, you look at different segments. Uh, so you banking, you, you pick one bank, you go to agriculture, you pick another company, so you you diversify. You have uh, if you have twenty thousand, you have that's like into like four. Four is a good number. Three to four companies, right? Now, if you lose in one company, for sure you will gain in the other. So imagine if you have split your money between uh, Home Africa, APSA, Safaricom, for example, right? So even if you would have lost money on your Home Africa share, which was trading, I think, on Friday at zero point four five. The other counters you have you would have gained. So the, the, the loss that you had you would have registered in one particular share would have been recovered by the overperformance in the other counters. So 
very key thing is you need to diversify. diversify. Like, like, exactly. So you, you can take like all your savings and put up a rental building. No. What if rental building uh, gets crashed, or it's you know government says that it's not it's co not constructed on the right right place, for example, right? So you will lose your entire savings. So I think one of the key things that we must do is we must diversify, uh, even whatever investment you're taking. Like if, if if I have some money, if I have hundred thousand, so I can put some in stocks, for example. I have some cash in the bank as my emergency fund, for example, right? I have. Um, some bit in a savings account and some bit in an insurance plan. So the key thing, what diversify? Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you, thank you, Brettner. So key thing, diversify. Even if you have your small money, you have saved your health like I did. Uh, uh, you just try to make sure that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. I want now to shift very fast to Juliet, and there's a question on uh, on uh, on debt. How do you appraise? Um, personal debt that is good? I'm trying to trace that question by Jim. How do you appraise a good personal debt? How do you assess that uh, this debt is good, I can accommodate this and this beyond, beyond me? How do you go about debt basically? You can address the whole issue of personal debt. Okay. Uh, yeah, there, so there are good debts. There are debts that you can take that are actually beneficial to your uh, bottom line financial situation and then there are bad debts. So I'm just going to highlight two things you want to think about before you take a debt. Um, one of which is, do you have capacity for it? So once you go through the budget and you see like where your income and your expenditure is, what is the status? Do you have a surplus? Do you have a deficit? Because this, this debt you're taking needs to be paid off. So looking at your budget, do you actually have capacity to pay it off uh, for the period of time that you will be having to pay it off? Like from... So you take your debt this month. So from next month, do you actually have capacity to pay it off? So that's one of the questions you want to ask yourself because what happens is uh, a debt becomes bad when it is uh, throwing you deeper into, into the hole rather than helping you to pull out. So that's one thing you want to think about. Um, the other thing you want to think about is uh, what is it for? What's the, what's the debt for? What are you taking a loan for? Is it something that can pay off the debt itself? So you want to invest in something that doesn't take away from your, your existing financial situation, but something that when you use that money, whatever comes in will pay off the debt. So that it's not actually something that's uh, pulling you and giving, giving you even more of a negative situation than you are already into. And uh, yes, then the other thing, was, of course, is the cost of the debt. Um, think about where you're getting it from and if it is possible to actually get it at a cheaper rate. Because some, some debts are bad just because of how much it's going to cost you to pay it off. You would have been smarter if you did a bit more research and try to see where else you can get it cheaper before you got it. Those, the, the other things to think through, but I think those would be the top three to, to consider before you take on a debt. Thank you. Thank you. Ju Thank you, Juliet. Just a follow on on that. We have our friends at uh, Tyler Branch, I'm sure, and they are always tempting us, you know, I'm broke, I want to go to, to, to town, you know, and uh, do stuff. So I just get some 5,000, 1,000 there. Yes. And, uh, I get from Tyler, I go get from Branch, I go another guy, I'm sure. Yeah. Before I know it, I have a debt of about 20,000 that I have to repay and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So actually, mm -hmm. because it is tempting, it is easy. It is within reach. How do we deal with that? Just delete those apps. Eh? <laughs> Stop okay, them. And them. Block, <laughs> block them from sending you those alerts. Just delete them and block them. Because you see, the thing about those apps, they don't, depending on what, um, hmm, I don't want to say, depending on what kind of business, for example, you're in, some of them claim to be helping people to, you know, give you working capital for small businesses and whatnot. But the real thing is that this money is just for spending. It's spending money, and that is a bad debt. If you're getting money to pay rent, I mean, if you're taking a loan to pay rent, that's a bad debt. If you're taking a loan to go on a trip, that's a bad debt. Like any any debt that's as in you want to you want to do a debt that is an investment. So like where, wherever you're going to be putting it is going to bring back income at some point. So first of all, yeah, I would just say 
just run. Yani just I don't even know how to put it. Run from those apps. <laughs> delete, delete them and and keep them from sending you alerts. <laughs> Okay, so now we argue that uh, sometimes they come and save the day, but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I want yeah. to hear back to Breitner, and uh, the question is, especially when you're talking about investing in the stock markets, uh, this purely gambling. Uh, if you look at it uh, keenly, like I'm just putting in my money there, and I hope the price will go up. Uh, so, how do we differentiate between the gambling that goes on in the market and the speculation, which are uh, which I know for traders is a big deal? and actual investing. How do you differentiate between the two? Should we as a young Christian people engage in gambling? No. Okay. Should we engage in shares? In shares? Yeah. So thanks. And, and I think I will answer this question in two parts. Uh, first is um, most investors are long-term investors. Uh, gamblers have a short-term focus. No. The first rule of investment is, is, for example, the stock market. You're actually buying uh, buying low with an expression that a company that whatever the company that you're getting into will actually will exist into the future, right? Uh, so you're looking at a company that look it has the right talent, uh, it has uh, a competitive uh, standing in the market, it has very good product offering in the market, right? Then at the end of the day. It will actually pay you out in two ways. Uh, the price of your initial investment will grow, right? Price appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be actual dividends that you will receive, right? Now, if I'm an investor, I will buy into this company on the basis of the dividends that I will receive from this investment uh, in addition to the price appreciation, right? Of the growth of the value of the investment, right? Now, gamblers on the other on the other on the other uh, side have a very short-term focus, and their focus is on just on price appreciation. If you will notice, well, most of them uh, they have no focus on the long-term on the long-term uh, uh, long-term. Uh, uh, like long-term status of a company, for example. So these are guys who are, who are actually looking for hot stocks, um, who are riding on trends. So they see COVID, they dump. They see that, co that, they, they see that uh, Safaricom is going to actually issue dividends they buy, right? So yeah. you find there's a distinction, one, in the investment temperament. So one has a long-term focus, the, 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 the pure investor has a long-term Focus and looking who they're looking for value, right? And three, they're looking for the actual cash out of the investment. So they're looking at what is the dividend, for example, out of what is the return that is on investment. Yeah. But let us a very short term, they focus on trends, right? They look on what's happening, um, uh, and, 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 and one, and you look at the investment uh, type. These are very pessimistic people. They they don't have they don't have financial discipline to actually stay the stay the course. So the question is then I would then you would ask me, would you would I advise you to be a speculator? Would I advise you to ride on trends on expectations of uh, share prices rising? Would I advise you to be a long-term investor? I would advise you to be a long-term investor in this uh, particular sense. If um, if I bought uh, the Safcom share uh, in 2012, it was at four shillings. Right now, if I held it to maturity, the case I gave you um, today, if I put uh, 10,000 shillings and that it was trading at four, four, that's uh, four, four tens, um, a thousand, that's, that's, so you have close to 4,000 shillings, right? Now, if the current price is at 26, 26 by the same is 26,000. So I have a, a, a cool gain of 22,000 for having a long term view, right? Of the market for the last more or less 18 years, right? Yeah. Three, eight years, right? Now, if I was a uh, speculator, what, what would I be doing? Is that now I know that the Safcom price today is at 26. Uh, I'll wait tomorrow. If it jumps to 29, I sell off. Right now, the, the, the tricky thing about doing that is this: What if 
because you don't know what if now you sell off at 20, at, at 29 because you've gained a shilling what if the next day rises to 30 all right so mm -hmm. and that is the problem so the, the actual problem with gambling is your very short term view of 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 uh, of, uh, of um of the market now the most important thing is looking at when you're looking at an, an investment now, let me take the practical look of something that we relate, relate relate to in your relationships ask yourself are you an investor or are you a speculator now, investor will take someone serious and say that I will, I will choose this particular person stick with this person no matter what because i know that this person uh, will be the right person and will be for my Good, right? A speculator will be will choose you today, tomorrow they dump you. Then another day they think that you're also you beneficial, they choose you. Or if they see grace is better, they, they go for grace. So I think and, and so you, that is a practical look at it. Now, for a Christian, uh, uh, this is not a theological. Um, is 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 we you know, by nature we have a long term view of life right it affects even how the kinds of relationships we get into even our focus on investments the same same long-term view that we have that we even have eternity you know uh, sister white says that you you know you live like you'll be here like for eternity right the same thing you spend right the way you actually you work it's as if you be here for eternity right but you spend your money like you you only have just one one more day so those those are the considerations um, um, thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, could I could I add on that? On in terms of the difference between investment and gambling, I want to add on also uh, the ethical aspect, um, um, which fits into your belief system as a Christian, because the the ethics of gambling is that they make money off of people losing, while an while an investor makes money out of people running good business, right? So when you think about it from the that ethical standpoint, then you want to lean more on the good business than on people suffering, benefiting out of people's suffering. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Then the other, I want to add two, two more points on the on the betting apps. Um, one one of the reasons why the, it's a trap is because you're very likely to get into a debt cycle when you start using the apps because you you will be you'll not be training yourself to manage your finances you'll always be looking for someone to pull you out and when there's not someone you now run to to the app and when you borrow from one and you have to pay it off you'll borrow from another to pay off that other one and that getting into that cycle is very easy with the apps then the other thing is the high cost of the of the interest people don't think the apps have high interest but they're actually more expensive than when you look at it at, at a per annum rate than other than what even banks or circles could actually be able to offer you. Thank you very much. I, I think we are, we are past our time. But I want to make sure that we have the question that we have. Uh, there was a question on uh, what was the right time to start preparing for retirement. So uh, who wants to take that? It can go to either of you, either Juliet uh, or Britna. And then the other question, I think uh, this one also now, this one goes directly to Breitner, is what is the tax rate on the profits made from the investments? That's uh, the whole range of investments, whether you are dealing with treasury bonds and bills, whether you're doing shares or whether you are saving somewhere, what are the, pro, uh, what are the tax, uh, taxes that apply there? So let's first deal with the retirement. Should we start preparing for retirement or you're too young to... Uh, <laughs> I, I would say the uh, the best time to start planning for retirement is as soon as you start working, or even before you start working, because you now have the advantage of of compound interest. Be, now the 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 idea of compound is like the earlier you start, the more you're actually able to earn from mm -hmm. whatever you put into your retirement pension plan, whether it's an a personal one or not. So if you work in an organization that um, has policies of automatically getting into your into your into a pension scheme, then you have no choice. But if you say you're running your personal business or whatnot, then as soon as you actually have an income, start thinking about retirement at that point. That's that's when you're most likely to benefit the most uh, out of compound interest, other than 
when you keep holding it off until you're 40 or 35 or whatever period of time. So as soon as you have an income, start thinking about it. Great. And Brettina, without really repeating uh, the answer that Juliet has given, can you now talk about the tax rates uh, that apply to the investments? And also, I understand there's a commission uh, that goes to the brokers. Whenever you're buying, they eat around 2%, and whenever you're selling, they eat around 2%. So can you also talk about that as a matter of a cost of investment and uh, just elaborate on that? So if, if, thanks, 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 Jeremy. Uh, for your typical cash in the bank, uh, mostly you have fees, uh, by, if it's a bank itself, and if it's a, um, have your money market fund, you also have fees to that, but mostly they don't, they, they they negligible. They in the zero point something zero point um, it's less than one percent for bonds, the tax free bonds, uh, infrastructure bonds, all bonds issued by the government uh, uh, are tax exempt. Now corporate bonds are uh, charged fifteen percent, which is a final tax. So on your interest income, if you're earning a hundred thousand, uh, so they will only take uh, so. Will be a withholding tax of fifteen percent on 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 that. Uh, on stocks, uh, you have uh, the commissions uh, that are charge capped at uh, if you if it's uh, the value is less than hundred thousand, it's around one point five percent. If it's if it's more, but the but the cap is at two percent, right? Um, so the only thing I think what has increased uh, that uh, now is that now we have VAT. Uh, mm -hmm. From the Tax Laws Amendment Act 2020, we have the VAT, which is also now charged onto the fees, which has increased the fees. It's a, it's a, it's at rate 2.0, around 2 percent, yeah, mostly. Then a very key distinction, I think, on because this I've just seen in the charts um, uh, this issue about uh, about speculating, and uh, I think, and uh, I think for for the difference between in 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 the stock market, it's different from you know. You're betting, you know, sports betting. So you have a winner loser kind of uh, situation, right? But yeah. In the in the stock market, I am selling to you an asset, right? You are yeah. buying an asset, right? So, uh, so that, that that is a key distinction. So uh, I may sell an asset at twenty nine shillings, but then the other person on the other end wants to, is willing to buy it at twenty nine shillings. So there's no, we don't have in the stock market, uh, we don't have those uh, lose, win lose situations. No, 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 no. Because I'm, I'm buying, you know, it's the willing buyer, willing seller you know, situation. Yeah. So, yeah. so that even now, even now, that's why, that's why I was making that key distinction is how the distinction between people who gamble, mm -hmm. people who invest, right? And yeah. people who also speculate, right? So people who also invest in the guys who are investing in Forex, Crypto, for example, those are speculators. Mm -hmm. They have just focused on the price, right? And and, and those, those distinctions are very key for us to understand uh, implications of gambling, speculation, and investment investing. Great. And uh, now I go back to you, to Juliet, with a question uh, that uh, is basically a general question I've seen on the charts. How do I know that now I'm kind of overheating? Uh, that is, I'm um, starting to live beyond my my means. At what point do I get to realize that now I'm getting into dangerous territory in terms of my personal finance? Um, when I was doing the presentation, I talked about uh, keeping records and constantly reviewing your records. If you have no records, you will have no idea you're getting into trouble. If you're on a monthly basis uh, looking at your income coming in and your income um, expenses going out, you'll always be able to tell whether you're running at a deficit or a surplus. Like oh, being yeah. able to con continuously manage your your expenses on that on that level. So when you when you when you see you're at a deficit, you're in trouble. Like if your yeah. income is less than your expenditure, you're already in trouble. You're now you in trouble. Yeah. come again. So I'm saying you. So the point is, you keep records and you track whether you are actually a deficit or a surplus. Yes, yes, point. yes. That's that's the basic way of knowing. So on a monthly basis or even a bi-monthly basis, keep looking at how much is coming in and how much is going out, um, so that you can 
be sure that you're actually either at balanced or your surplus is more so that you actually have uh, money to invest. Great. So keep record and uh, follow on that. So there's another question on, uh, on the, still on the apps. Uh, someone says here, yeah, Kinas is saying that uh, you can use those to build a uh, credit, uh, your own credit uh, credit score, that you are a good uh, you know borrower, and then you get uh, uh, you get paid back. Uh, rather, you get uh, to to borrow uh, sometime in the future, and when you're asked for your credit score, you can produce it. You know, uh, so should we use them, or how else can we build our credit score with uh, the financial institutions? Uh, at a point whereby you might need to borrow some money to start your small business or something. Okay, uh, there's uh, there's value there's value to that, but also I don't know. I don't think our culture on credit score is at the level where it should be, so that you can actually rely so much on what your credit score is. Uh, but your but it's true. Like they they can be beneficial as long as someone actually wrote there that you actually need a exceptional discipline even with credit cards your ability to pay off on a monthly basis pay yeah. off credit card bills on a monthly basis determines actually to the banks to them it will look like you're a, you okay to you you're you're using your finances well but banks consider you uh an uh um mm -hmm. a, a not beneficial customer if i can say that because they are trying to lock you in with that with the with the, with the debt Right, because yeah. the more okay. debt you take in, the more they actually earn from from your from you. So when you are actually active and disciplined in paying off your debt, yeah. the financial institutions don't value you. They don't think you are the same. So I'm just okay. here for feedback. But, uh, but there, there's, I can see where the thought process is. Can you hear me, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, I can see where the thought process is, but if you if you genu if you genuinely do not have that discipline, and like I said, personal finance is very personal, and you need to be very self aware. If you know you don't have that discipline, don't use that as an excuse to get into 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 debt using those apps. So before we move to from that uh, point, Jeremy, 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 yeah. if I can just add, yeah? uh, one is uh, CBK has banned all uh, these fintech lending apps from submitting uh, personal information to, to the CRB. Uh, CRB. Yeah. So one, so the, it does not, it can't apply. So there's no really, there's no credit score that you're building there because now they can't. CRBs now don't have that particular information from your tellers and all that. So your tellers don't have, cannot actually legally, you know, score you mm -hmm. yeah. when they cannot access the credit information sharing mechanism that they set up. So I think that it's, 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 it's a, it, it can't. A moot point. Yeah, exactly. At, yeah. at, this, at this level, it, it might be just considered a moot point until CBK considers the, reviews the policy, I guess. Great. So what you're saying is Tala Branch and their brothers and sisters and cousins, we keep them off. They're not really helpful. If you want to build a credit score, build it with your bank. By the end of the day, if you want to start a business or you want to borrow some big money, the Talas won't give you 100K plus uh, or a million if you want to start a business. It's your bank. So build that relationship with your bank uh, and then uh, you can build your credit score there. Yeah. So a lot of it Questions are coming up, and um, just to finish up on that apps thing, there's uh, one question here that just came in. What's the most important, most appropriate budget and financial planning app? Do you have like an app that you can just recommend? Unfortunately, all the apps I know, as in none, of, none is local. So a lot of them depend on, they are linked. A good app is one that would link directly either to your m or your bank account so that it, it automatically helps you manage. But none of our local money management apps can do that yet. All the ones that I know are international and they're locked into dollar accounts and whatnot. But you can look at something like Mint and see just in terms of helping you, mint.com. Just go to mint.com and have a look at that. In terms of just helping you figure out um, even the looking, like giving you visuals of your, of your spending, but then you just have to input the amounts yourself so that okay. you can you can track it 
So a good a good app would be one that removes your 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 involvement in it, like so that you're not the one who now has to put in. I spent this much. I spent this much. If it's automatically linked to your spending card or your Mpesa, that will be that would be a very helpful app. But I I don't know one that is local that does that well yet. Yeah, so you can you can share the the, the the you can share the the names on the on the chat so that people can pick the ones sure. that are recommended. Okay. And uh, for for those who are innovators within uh, this uh, conversation, I think there's an opportunity there. We we have been told there is no local one that actually fulfills the needs. So you can take it up and uh, developers who are here, uh, that is techy 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 people. You can start thinking about that. Now, the other question before I go to the question on impulse buying, there was a question that was asked somewhere by Winnie Gesare. I want to go back to it. It was about uh, renting to, to own. Is it a good investment? Now that we are youth, we are young people and we are growing towards, uh, you know, we want to settle down and have our own homes and stuff. Uh, rent to own, is it a good investment? Is it a good uh, uh, way to, to think about it? I don't know whether I'm, I'm interpreting the question well, uh, but I'm thinking there's a question between should I be paying rent when I'm staying in Nairobi or should I be paying, you know, that mortgage and uh, at the end of the day, I own the, the apartment. So we could tackle it from that angle and if I've not uh, handled it well, uh, Winnie, you can uh, help us in the chat to understand where you're coming from. Rent or should I take mortgage? Oh, one of the key things you have uh, is um, so you ask yourself what is the cost of the mortgage, right? So there's an yeah. interest rate uh, cost of the mortgage. So mortgage a report done by uh, Q3 has consult report. So this is um, at uh, in between 15 to 22 percent, right? Yeah. And um, so you ask yourself a question now. Can you, like, so what, uh, so you, you're asking yourself at this point, if I'm going to take a mortgage, mortgage from the bank, it's around that rate, right? If I take it from the circle, probably to be around 12%, right? Mm -hmm. So is the question just to ask yourself, like the, my current uh, salary, right? Mm -hmm. And it, can I afford actually taking that up, right? So can I switch uh, from renting to owning a property, right? Now, uh, there's another report done again on housing in Kenya. And uh, so typically, uh, so we did some financial modeling. I, I Some studies I think I can share with you. Uh, if I get uh, where I have it is. The, for, depending on your income, Average cost of a mortgage in Kenya is in, in is upwards uh, fifty thousand Kenya shillings, right? So, yeah. if if I'm going to pay a mortgage of fifty thousand Kenya shillings, and that's a third of my net income, right? Then uh, it's I'm earning a, a net of around one hundred fifty thousand, right? Yeah. So so that's a great that's a typical like if you look at the industry the mortgages that you have. It poses a problem to the youthful guys are actually getting out to actually own houses, right? Yeah. So, so the study now, one of the key things the study shows is um, a very easier route is uh, rather taking out first the whole mortgage, a 10M mortgage or 15M mortgage to buy a house, for example, is um, take your circle loan first, buy that land, like 2.5, where you really want to build, for example, right? A 2.5 finish off the actual loan, build up your cash um, as you're renting, and save up to do um, um, uh, a greater percentage of your deposit for your mortgage to reduce now the eventual cost of you actually paying up for the mortgage, right? So it's, so the, my answer, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the very many other options uh, which uh, we can take it off offline if, of, 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 of interest, actually uh, get to this is what is what am i actually earning what is the what will be the cost if i'm if i'm get if i'm if my rent is thirty thousand for example right yeah. uh, what is available mortgage at thirty thousand right or uh, what facility can i take in that can substitute the same same amount of money that i'm actually renting at 
uh, and then by a property in that. Great. I see uh, Ashley Nyabuto is saying there's an app called Circle App that can be linked to an Mpesa account. Uh, you, you, can, you can check that one out and see how functional it is and how well it is. I think uh, something that is coming into my mind is we, we might end up having as many questions coming through. Money, money is a very sensitive issue and we all want more money and uh, so we might not uh, proceed for so long. For our panelists, uh, as, we, as we proceed towards the close, I would like you to start thinking about your closing remarks in terms of the practical advice you would give the participants today. Things they can start applying right now, this night, on personal finance management in terms of uh, generating incomes, uh, investments, savings, uh, planning for their retirement, uh, insurance, uh, the very practical and easy steps, you know, what we call low-lying fruits. What can they do immediately after this call that will start them off? So start thinking about those, uh, those questions and uh, uh, those, uh, those closing remarks as we look through the, the final questions. There was a very interesting question here, which I think we are all suffering from, uh, impulse buying. You go to the supermarket or to the mall nowadays is actually the mall which has everything so you move from one corner to the other before you move out of that mall you have bought uh, food uh, in the supermarket you have bought uh, some clothes in the in the boutique there you have even sat at java and uh, you know drunk you know some coffee there before you leave so you end up spending so much money than you had intended to how do we curb that how do you control that impulse spending and there you are with your friends and, you know, you throw unachafua meza kidogo for your friends. <laughs> how, do you, how do you control that? How do you, how do you manage that? Um, okay, for one, it really, it really narrows down to your, to your sense of discipline. And if you are not disciplined around your finances, it just speaks to also other areas of your life. Like look at how disciplined you are in other areas of your life. If you find that you are in other areas of your life, then you can just redirect the same sense of discipline when it comes to your finances. Um, the other thing that I actually talked about, which you uh, laughed at is, is going to shop with a list. Like when you go there aimlessly, you will really be aimless in what you're going to do. But when you like go purposefully, you actually know how much, this is now specifically when it comes to going for shopping, uh, whatever it's, whether it's a weekly, monthly, whatever, having that amount that you intend to spend and then having the things that you intend to buy. In as much as possible, reduce the, the, the chances of you spending extra by going with exactly how much you need or just restricting restricting um disposable income i should call it that like whatever money whatever lose money that you have restricting that amount so that you are not tempted so i would those are the main things that i would look at look at your the root cause is the ability to be disciplined and then also just kind of putting measures along the way that will reduce the chances of you overspending those are like my top two i would say around impulse buying Great, and now I'm going to, to ask a question on behalf of the boy child. Now that you're having COVID and you know uh, things are very thick during this COVID period, how, how, how much should we spend on a date? Where should we cap our spending on? <laughs> <laughs> Have a conversation. Like, I don't think... I feel like when you're when you're in a that kind of relationship, you should be able to have honest communication around financing and around finances. Uh, like I I keep saying, this personal finance is finance. I can't put for you a figure to use when you're going out on a date. You know what your situation is. The problem comes when you you have no you don't have the ability to communicate, or the person you're communicating to does not have the ability to accept what you're communicating. And that already is a problem, yeah? So you're, you should be able to communicate what your situation is and how, you, how you're how you willing to go about it or what you intend, how you intend to go about it. And if you're also talking to someone who is understanding, a believer, they should be able to also understand your, your situation. I think it just all boils down to open 
and uh, open communication. Yeah, don't try, you. don't try to be macho yourself. You know, because if you put off a facade that you have it, you've got it, you're able. That's how you'll be perceived, and that's how you'll be received. So just be open about it. Be 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 um, ready to talk about openly what your what your situation is. I think. That, that raises another very controversial topic that I don't want us to discuss today, which is maybe disclosing what we earn to our boyfriends and girlfriends <laughs> who might leave us the following day and, uh, and, and, and go elsewhere. But anyway, that one we'll, uh, we'll, look, we'll, look, we'll look at that in, uh, another day. Thank yeah. you very much, everyone. I don't think I've uh, forgotten any question that we have on our, on our, on our chat. Uh, thank you for participating. Thank you for creating time on a Sunday evening that you could have been doing other things or watching other... Other, other, other channels on TV for this uh, discussion. We believe it has been insightful. And like we mentioned, we are going to be having these sessions, uh, more of them every Sunday uh, at this particular hour so that we look at life holistically. We, we, so that we don't just focus on, you know, um, spirit of prophecy, the Bible and spiritual matters, and then we forget we are broke. We don't even have tithe to take to church. So we'll be looking at all these things and uh, we believe uh, more sessions are coming. The, the leadership will communicate on the on the on the on, on the next session, but I believe it is a, even an exciting, a more exciting one about jobs and the future of jobs and what we should be looking at. Uh, some people have been, uh, you know, fired. Others are earning half the salaries. Uh, job workplaces are changing. What does that mean for us as young people? And how do we position ourselves to be the best uh, people we can be at the workplaces? And how do we represent God even when we are doing that? So more interesting topics are coming. Uh, Watch, uh, watch out for this, but I would, I would just uh, want to thank you to, for making it here today. Now, I'm going back to my panelists who have been very helpful. I don't have uh, better words to, to thank you. Uh, I can keep thanking you more uh, for this whole presentation. You made it work. You made it happen. You have shared with us a lot of insights. And I would request that uh, anyone who feels that uh, there's something that has been left out that they wanted to, to hear from any of our panelists and they want to, to learn more, I know both of them. I'm not speaking on their behalf, but I know both of them and I know they are good people. They won't refuse uh, to, to respond to you if you approach them. So feel free to reach out to our panelists if you have questions on investments and uh, right now is complicating our lives with the stock market. Reach out to him and, uh, you know, give him trouble until he makes it easy for you. And uh, of course, for, for, for Juliet, uh, she's here to guide you through your personal finance management journey. That's what she does every other day. So they are our experts here, and you can always uh, reach out to them. So back to my panelists. What are your final uh, words, practical uh, things that our participants today can actually move out of this place and start implementing this evening? Let's start with uh, Brechner. What are the easy, straightforward uh, investments or savings plans that our people can do uh, immediately after this. Jeremy, if I would allow Julia to go first, what happened to ladies first? <laughs> <laughs> when before, when before. <laughs> <laughs> kindly, kindly, Juliet. Kindly, Juliet, take the floor. <laughs> okay, Juliet, you have been interested. Okay, I think my key, my, my final words would be for you to make sure that you have a visual of your financial situation. Don't assume that you know how much is coming in and how much is going out. Like sit down, like this is something you actually do when we live here. Sit down and look at your 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 expenditure and your income. What is what balance do you have on M-Pesa? What balance do you have on your bank account? How much debt do you have? Like make sure you actually when someone asks you what is your financial position right now, as are you able to answer it? Once you're able to answer it, like whether or not it's investing or cutting debt or all those decisions, then you can start making them. But if you have no idea of your financial situation right now, if you're just making guesses or a rough estimate, I don't think that's good enough. Like you need to be super anal about your finances if you actually want to make a difference in your in your financial situation. So this is like very practical. You can actually log out right now and start doing it. Thank you very much, Julie. Now we come to 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 boy child. Uh, to, uh, thanks, 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 Jeremy, for speaking for the boy child on other matters of national interest. <laughs> um, 
Um, I think it was really an honor to share that, share this discussion with uh, share share uh, the same platform with Juliet and for uh, very concise and uh, brilliant presentation. I think um, I also come out of this uh, as also a, a panelist wiser than I came in. Um, it's also to appreciate uh, the team for also uh, organizing this. I think for me, as the key thing is is uh, just start now. Um, it's you know just start now. It's no other better time. It's uh, and probably that time will never come. Um, and and as down the line, you never regret the decision you made on the twenty fourth of May, twenty twenty. So I mean, start now. Start now. Blessings, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for for your time. Thank you for your. Uh, insights and thank you for creating time. Now it's one minute to 9.30. I would like to hand over to the leadership to uh, to take over now and uh, close the, the forum. Everyone who attended, we thank you so much. We look forward to meeting you next Sunday. Invite your friend, tell them you're having good conversations here that are really uh, practical and uh, useful for our lives. So over to either Betty or Wayne or Jim, over to the leadership. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Shiro, for the wonderful uh, moderation and uh, helping out, and also to Brightner and Juliet. Uh, thank you so much for creating time to be here with us and to guide us and to enlighten us in this field of finance, financial management. Personally, I am not that well conversant with this sector and I've learned a lot through this and you know thinking about saving and knowing the right places to, to invest your money in and to avoid scams, to avoid scams which is very key during this point of time but uh, thank you again and I think it would be nice, it's Chadwick who started off uh, as a representative as a leader so it would really be nice if he's the one who crowns it all, crowns it all. So, Chadwick, uh, I'm handing the mic to you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Chadwick, we can hear you. Okay, nice. Uh, I would like to appreciate all of you for uh, attending. Uh, personally, I, I went to business school, and at times I always think that there is nothing more to, to learn. But I'm really grateful that there were really great reminders and some new lessons. Thank you, Brightna, Juliet, and Riro for this good work. And for all the members who made time to be here, may God bless you. And we hope that you will join us in the successive sessions. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we meet here every Friday and we are planning to do this also every Sunday. So so you are welcome. Uh, lastly, uh, probably I would ask Elder, I, I can see Elder Godwin in the forum. Probably he will, uh, I would like to ask him to say a word of prayer and then we will be done. Thank you everyone for attending. Hello, Elder Godwin, are you able to get me? Yeah, he's there, he's there. Okay, let us believe and pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, thank you for your goodness and thank you for the life that you have given us and the opportunity you've allowed us as young people to share in this forum. We ask that may your blessing be with each and every one of us as you continue teaching us in your ways. May you keep us safe. May you protect us uh, during these uh, hard times. And may you even open new opportunities for us to the glory and honor of your name. With us till we meet again next time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye, everyone.